This is Victoria Street in Stellenbosch uh, and all of these plane trees that you see lining the street here are probably going to become infected with the polyphagous shot hole borer. And once that happens, it will take three or four years and the trees will start to die. When the beetle entered South Africa, as far as we know, at the earliest um, stage it was 2012, um, when we um, have a sample, a DNA sample of one of the beetles confirmed um, from Richards Bay. Um, but since then, the first official um, documented case um, was in 2017, a sample that was collected from KwaZulu-Natal. Had we uh, found this beetle when it, when it first got here, and it was still a very restricted population, we would have been able to eradicate it. But we can't eradicate it now anymore because it's far too widespread. It's been found in eight out of nine provinces. If the shot borer is not, not stopped in its tracks, then, then you have about 65 million trees that are at risk. I'm calling it a perfect invader because um, really if I had to design an invasive species this is the, the way I would go. It's something that's really small. Um, if you think in terms of its life cycle, it doesn't actually need um, to be mated to, to invade a new area. So a single female, whether she's mated or not, can actually start a new epidemic. But really the most important way that they spread, um, the easiest way that they do the sort of jump dispersal is by being associated with, with humans. So that also um, plays towards this perfect invader role. As soon as an organism is closely associated with human movement, they can actually get around quite easily. So the beetle is really difficult to, to, to find or to, to identify in the first place. It's really small. Um, so if you look at the samples we have here, um, so this is, if you look at the outside of this wood, you'll see a minute little hole there. It's going straight into the wood. It's basically the size of this ballpoint pen's tip. Um, so it's about one millimeter in diameter. So that's the first indication that you're dealing with this beetle. Um, they go into a living tree, so a small hole in a living tree. But once you open that up, so you lift the bark sample from that, like the sample we have here, you remove the bark there and you can see there's a fungal staining around that sort of a dark stain around that. That's a, another indication um, that you're dealing with this beetle. Um, so the fungus on its own is really not too pathogenic. So the fungus on its own will unlikely cause a lot of damage to a tree. Same with the beetle, it's just little holes that you find in a tree. But once you combine these two in a single system, um, you have, you have a, a scenario where the beetle can drill holes throughout the tree, um, damaging some of the, the, the wood material, the, the xylem tissues and things like that. But you also have this fungus that invades the tissues around the tunnel system and they actually block the vascular tissues um, of, this, uh, of the tree, um, which means that there's a limited movement of water and nutrients throughout this tree. Um, the trees typically show drought symptoms and that is because the water supply has been cut off to the leaves. For this particular project, we worked on the short hole borer and its economic damages that it's causing in the economy. Um, one of the important findings of the model is that very surprisingly that the urban tree stock in, in South Africa is the most susceptible on a national level to the invasion of the short hole borer. 95% um, of our model is driven by the cost of managing urban trees. We estimated the damage to, to the um, South African economy over the next 10 years, about 275 billion rand. Um, and that is unmitigated. If nothing is done, that is, that is a substantial amount of money for, for a small, small beetle. Um, the most important thing to do right at, at this point in time is to restrict the movement of wood, uh, infested wood, as well as inf infested plants uh, across, across different regions and places. So the way to deal with this is to actually remove the infected trees before the beetles can spread to the next tree. That's the only thing we can do. Uh, so you have to cut down the tree, you have to chip it, you have to then put the wood chips under plastic and allow it to decompose. We've very recently confirmed the very first tree in Stellenbosch, um, in the town of Stellenbosch, that is infested with this, this beetle and this tree is already showing signs of dieback. In terms of, of spread, so if you compare it to the neighbouring town of Somerset West, um, it took four years for this beetle to spread throughout the entire town. Um, if we follow that sort of logic and that, that same timeline, within the next four years, the first oak trees in, in Stellenbosch will start to die from this beetle.